Warning, this episode contains discussions and descriptions of child abuse and may not be suitable for all audiences. For exact time stamps and a full list of content warnings, please check the show notes. We suggest you check the content warnings regardless, since this is a bit of an intense episode and contains instances of panic attacks, screaming, and violence. Listener discretion is advised. Eyed Frog presents The Heart of Ether. This place smells like a zoo. I need to introduce a recording. Interview with Lorelei Foster at her home. Part of Operation Saturn, Phase 1.2. Conducted by Agents May and June. All... Uh, June! Hey! Stay in the car! What? Come on, dude. I'm getting impatient. We'll go up to her door in a minute. There's just... I, I need to ask you something first. Oh. Why didn't you just say so? You are aware of the case of Lorelei Foster, correct? Um, obviously. She was a part of some coven and they all went missing except for her. She moved to this house way outside of town and refused to show her face. Well, under the naming conventions of Valencia and Wood, the Foundation believes that Lorelei Foster is what is known as a beastly. What she could be capable of, it's not something to play around with, okay? She could be dangerous. Not deadly, per se but still potentially devastating in her power. Wow, that's super comforting, Agent May. Just don't say or do anything stupid, all right? Also, if when we see her, she looks, you know, different, don't comment on it. Act like you don't even notice. That's all? Well, don't worry about it then. I never judge a book by its cover. I'll just stand there and act as well-behaved as I always do. That's what I feared. Miss Foster, this is Agents May and June. We're with the Harper Foundation. We're here to ask you a few questions. Maybe she's not home? I don't believe she ever leaves her house. Look at her car. It's untouched. I'm sure she even gets her groceries delivered somehow. We do not wish to harm you or bring you into custody, Miss Foster. We won't tell anyone what you are or what you're doing out here. We simply believe you may have some helpful insight on Ether. Just let us ask a few things, and then we'll be out of your way. Maybe it's a lost cause. Well, at least we can say we tried. Guess we should just go back into the- You... do not plan on taking photographs, do you? We're recording this over audio. Nobody will see your face except for the two of us. We promise. Yeah, don't sweat it. We're like- Oh my god! Is there a problem? Not at all, Miss Foster. Apologies for my colleague. He is... I have a fear of new people. Yep. Terrified of them. It's tragic. Really. Makes our job incredibly difficult. Quite. Well, you said you had questions. That we do. May we come in? I would advise against it. Terence is a pacifist when around me, but I am unsure of how he would react to new people. And who is Terence exactly? A bear. Used to be a friend. Oh. I am still unsure whether his calm nature is because he maintained his human consciousness, or if I have some level of control over him that makes him do as I wish. Perhaps a mix of both. 
Did you make him this way? That much should be obvious, don't you think? Assuming you really know what you're talking about and you're not just bluffing. We are somewhat familiar with your kind, but we're always looking to learn more. <laughs> is that what this is? You view me as a learning opportunity? Like a sample dragged in by the biology teacher for lab day? Of course not. We're just trying to learn more about ether. I am... Very curious about how you managed to do it, though, if you care to indulge us. I never asked for any of this. When we attempted the ritual, our hope was that by the end of it, all of us would obtain the same level of power. Valencia told me it would never work. I had quite the rebellious streak back then, though I didn't believe him. Perhaps I should have. If I had known that all of that power would have been channeled into me, I never would have attempted it. Now that time has passed, I realize how useless of a power it even is. What made Ether decide to curse me with it, I'll never know. Perhaps we didn't speak clearly enough when we did the ritual. I had no idea what my limits were or how to use my abilities, the consequences, of course, were far greater than I could have ever imagined. Terence and Abigail were both accidents. Clementine, I turned her into a spider in a fit of rage. Scott happened when I was sobbing my eyes out, and he made the mistake of trying to comfort me. I am unsure if I intended to turn him into a snake or not. By the time River was the only one left, they came to me and asked to be turned into a cat. They said they knew I was bound to do it eventually, and they wanted to choose what animal they became. I did as they wished. <laughs> I don't think Abigail likes you. You mentioned that the consequences were far greater than you could have imagined. Was that in reference to the loss of your friends? No, oh, don't make me say it. It would have been one thing if I simply turned my entire coven into my own little petting zoo. Now, however, I can never escape my own errors, even if I were to leave them all behind. I am forever haunted by the marks my ability has left. The bare paw that has become of my left hand. The raven feathers in my hair, the spider eyes sprawled across my face, the venom that drips from my fangs and burns my lips, and, oh, how disappointing having the tail of a cat is, despite how elegant I thought it would be when I was a little girl. Cats used to be my favorite animal. They aren't anymore. Don't you think River would take offense to that? Perhaps you're right. How did you access Ether's power? The same way I'm sure most people have. We did a ritual. Just as most of them do, it went wrong. Do you know where exactly it went wrong? Can I be honest with you? I have had years to think long and hard about the events that transpired that night. I read through our plans over and over and over again, hoping to find a way to undo it all. After all of that, I came to the conclusion that whatever fault it was, whatever slip of the tongue or missing ingredient could have been, none of it would have mattered. Ether chooses who to favor and who to damn by the luck of a draw, flip of a coin. It knows no order. It will do what it pleases. It is not a person or a sentient being. It is a random number generator that can grant unlimited power if you get lucky. a lottery of stones, however. Nobody is ever really winning, even those as fortunate as the forget-me-nots, or those well-off enough 
to never hear about ether at all. Do you have any other questions? I'm rather sure my pets are looking forward to their dinner. Just one. Where is the heart of ether? I would be careful if I were you. I've heard things, rumors about your little project. Though I doubt you fully understand the dangers, seeing as you're just the worker bees, hmm? It's not my place to question, I'm afraid. Perhaps you should. Never does anyone any good, blindly following orders. Hey, go away! Shoo! If you could answer the question, I promise we'll be out of your hair. Hmm. I'm afraid I can't be of much help. For years, people believed Ether resided in the sky, but that is... untrue. Though during the brief window Valencia was willing to speak to me, he did tell me he had a theory. <laughs> Stupid cat! I would appreciate it if you did not insult my animals. Then tell River to leave me the hell alone! Can't you control them or whatever? At least use your freaky powers to- It's June. I just want this damn- I mean, uh, <laughs> this lovely cat to, uh- <laughs> I am, I'm so sorry, ma'am. This has been incredibly rude of me. What was your name again? Jo- um, uh, Agent June? Agent June. Agent June, do you have a favorite animal by chance? Don't say anything, just thank her and let's go- I, I don't know. Have you ever heard of Sonic the Hedgehog? Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, I was obsessed with those games growing up, and so I went through this whole phase where I really wanted a pet hedgehog really, really badly, but my parents never let me have one, said I was too irresponsible or whatever. That dream kind of, like, carried over into my adult life, though? So, hedgehogs. Um, sure. I see. I do hope you're happy with that choice, Agent June. What the shit? Ah! Did you just tranquilize her? I didn't have a choice. Come on, get in the car. The full effect only lasts 45 seconds. Did she change you at all? No, no. But it, this really weird feeling washed over me like like my body was trying to fit into a smaller one. I, that was the worst thing I've ever felt. Oh my god. Agent June, calm down. You're safe now, okay? Yeah, only because of you. You just saved my life. I mean, technically... I would have survived, but I would have had to live the rest of my days as a hedgehog. Maybe if you had been able to hold your damn tongue for 30 seconds, this wouldn't have happened. I'm sorry, I was having an allergic reaction. That's no excuse for you to have said the things you did. I told you to keep it together. Stop trying to blame all of this on me. I don't care if it's my fault. I almost just lost my humanity. Do you know how horrifying that was? No, you're right. You're not entirely to blame for what just happened. If only she had at least finished her sentence about Valencia's theory. Yeah, that was pretty poor timing, huh? We'll find out one way or another. We have to go back to Irene Gray. Ah uh, yes, the other enemy we've made in this town. I guess we're gonna have to find a way to change that then. Turn off the recording, please. I'm parked in front of Lemongrass Park. To be honest, I've never actually been here, even though it's so close to my house. It's small, but it's a nice park. There's a swing set, a seesaw, one of those metal slides that would always burn my skin during the summer. Some nice trees, too. Do you 
remember when we would go to the park late at night? It's really stupid of us to go there after dark. Honestly, it's a miracle nothing ever happened. Well, I mean, you did hurt your leg that one time you fell off the swing, which I still feel bad about. It felt so serene, though, like we were the only people in the world. We were still clinging on to our childhood innocence, and you... <laughs> you were so fond of that park near your house, and I was so fond of the way you laughed. You'll love this park, too, I think, if you ever get to see it. You always loved places where... Oh, wait. Hold on. I think... I think Sadie's waving at me. She's sitting over on one of the swings. At least I think it's her. Not quite what I expected her to look like, but then again, I don't know what I was expecting. She's wearing all black and has a striped shirt underneath her t-shirt, even though it's hot as hell. Is this how emo kids dress these days? I think Aiden said something about e-girls or something. <sighs> Jeez, I need to start keeping track of these things. I feel so old. She's also wearing a black fabric surgical mask with a white design. I've hardly seen people wear those outside of the medical profession. I, I mean, there was one time, but that was an outlier. It must be her, though. Otherwise, why would she be waving at me? Have the box of film in the passenger seat? Avery and I talked today, and they were incredibly vocal about how bad of an idea this was, but they said I'm an adult and can make my own choices. Avery is... Well, I think they have good intentions at heart. They act indifferent all the time, and they're incredibly mature, but they seem... I don't know. Sometimes there's this fear, maybe, that bleeds through when they speak. I think they try to hide it. Reminds me they're still technically a kid. Right. I feel kind of awkward sitting here while Sadie is staring at me. Guess I should get this over with. Irene, right? Yep. Wonderful! I'll take that. That looks heavy. How many photos did you take? Uh, thank you. Uh, I didn't take these, though. I see. That's a bummer. I thought I'd met a person of similar passions. Sorry to disappoint. Oh, don't stress it. Where'd you get the film done? It's from one of my dead relatives. Mm, sorry to hear that. It was a while ago, so it's okay. You sure took lots of photos. Do you have any idea what they photographed? No clue. Well, I'll do my best to get this developed. I'm staying with my uncle for part of the summer. He never uses his dark room, so I have it all to myself. You know, he has this massive house, spends lots of money on rooms he never uses every time he gets a new hobby. Adi chose Dotler of all places to stick it. You know, that's what I said. My professor went green with envy when I told her about it, though. She said this is the perfect town to take pictures. You're a student, then? Yep, majoring in photography, in case that wasn't already clear. <laughs> um, anyways, I'll try to get this developed for you as quickly as possible. It may take a while, because there's so much of it, so would you like me to give it to you in batches? That would be great, yeah. Um, thank you. Are you sure I can't pay you? Oh, please, don't worry about it. Like I said, I'm just thankful for the opportunity. So, um, uh, any other questions for me? I'm happy to answer them. Um, I have a bit of a weird one. Hmm? Why are you wearing a surgical mask? Is it like a germ thing, or are you sick? I should go get started on this. Um, you didn't... Pleasure <laughs> working with you, Irene. I'll get back to you about your first batch ASAP. Oh, okay then. Um, bye. Later. Well, that was interesting, for lack of a better term. Sadie seems fine. I guess I just got a bit too personal with the mask thing. I mean, if it makes her feel comfortable, I don't see why she can't wear it. I'll try not to worry about it. As long as she can develop the photos, that's what matters. Though I am kind of worried. I mean, Valencia could have taken, well, suspicious photos. 
assuming they're connected to his research. I have no idea. I guess we just have to hope. Sadie seems pretty okay with minding her own business, it seems, so if I'm lucky, she won't question it. Oh, hang on. Avery's calling me. Hello? Just making sure you didn't get murdered. Well, I didn't. Sadie was fine. You really had nothing to be worried about. I mean, it's still a really bad idea to be meeting someone in the park this late. Toller's a small town, but even if we don't have much of a problem with normal creeps, weird stuff is still kind of the norm, you know? Yeah, I've gathered that much. I- Wait, hang on, are you playing video games right now? Dude, it's just Stardew Valley. It's not like I'm fighting anything. I don't know what that is. That's because you're old. Hey. Oh no, I just got attacked. I gotta hang up, sorry Irene. You just said there's no- Combat. Talk to you later, I guess. Is it recording? Yes, it is. Cool. Cool. I got eggs, by the way. I know you talked about wanting to try to make a pie at some point, and you were running low. Oh, so. um, thank you. Um, why were you out so late, anyways? Hmm? Oh, just a nighttime stroll. I see. Alright, then. You have the next letter? I guess all that's left to do is open it. You sure you're okay with me being in the room for this? I know her letters to you were, well, personal. It's okay. Don't worry. I I trust you. I'm sure Grandma Doe would too. That... that means a lot. Go ahead then. <clears throat> Phoebe, if you are reading this, I assume you have successfully completed the ritual. If it was not a success, well... I have a separate envelope marked for you to read. I suggest you find it. Almost want to read the other one just to see what it says. I don't think that's a good idea. If the alternative was that bad, well, I don't want to think about what could have happened to me. Fair. Yeah. Continue. <clears throat> if everything worked as well as I hope, then you have now stepped into your role as a forget-me-not. I could not be more proud of you, little wildflower. What a lovely forget-me-not you will be. I have already warned you of some of the dangers, but now that this is your reality, I am going to begin to describe it all in more detail, in order to prepare you. It is nothing I have not already mentioned in previous letters, however. Now, let us start from the beginning. Why did I name them forget-me-nots? Valencia thought it to be a rotten name. Too flowery, he said it was, too delicate. I believed it to be a sophisticated name. Better than The Hungry, or whatever other titles he's come up with. The hell is The Hungry? Um, I'm not sure. I'm sure we'll find out? Let's hope. It goes on. <laughs> Anyways... I called them the forget-me-nots because it is not just about their quest for new knowledge. It is about the knowledge they already have. Sure, they know where to find any and all information, but what about that which is already within them? A forget-me-not cannot forget anything. Even the tiniest detail they will cling on to for the rest of their life. I still remember what I ordered at an Italian restaurant 27 years ago. It was some mediocre chicken parmesan. The sauce was a bit too bitter for my taste, but I went back there because they had delightful breadsticks. However, this is a double-edged sword. It is not just new information you will begin to retain, if only it was that simple. A forget-me-not also remembers all which has happened before. This includes all of your life up to this point, from your early childhood to more recent events. When I chose you to be my predecessor, this is what I dreaded most. Your mother and I always considered it to be a blessing in disguise that you did not remember much of your childhood. I know you are aware of what happened, but the specifics are far worse than I think you've ever processed. I would not wish memories of that horrid time upon anyone, especially you. 
Your poor mother, my dear Agnes, she lives through them every day. You may be forced to confront some of the memories of your father. The sick, rotten, vile man he was. I am eternally grateful I was able to save you from some suffering when you were a child, though I am deeply remorseful for all your mother put herself through. I wish I could be there to walk you through it all, to comfort you as you remember, but the circumstances are not in my favor. You are stronger than you give yourself credit for, however, and you do not have to do it alone. Please do not hesitate to reach out to your mother if you find yourself needing the support. You could also talk to a friend. I'm assuming you have an abundance of those. You're far too charming and sweet to not have any. Like I've said, isolation will only drain you of all you are. Nothing about this process will be easy, but I would not put you through it if I did not believe you could handle it. Take your work slowly. Do not rush into it. Allow your mind to process the... Phoebe? I... Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's just... Is something wrong? The letter. It's, it's just, um, got me thinking, I guess, about my father. How much do you remember of him? <laughs> oh, I'm trying to avoid that train of thought. I'm scared it will all come flowing in at once. Oh, right. Yeah. Try not to focus too much on it, okay? No, I'm okay. I just... I remember bits of it more vividly now than I did before. Have you seen the stuffed cow sitting on my bed? It's... So old and worn, but it's one of the most precious things I own. Its name is Baby. It's, um, a silly name, I know. I used to play pretend with it, though, and act like I was its mother. I, I cradled it, pretended to feed it, so I named it Baby. I didn't remember why I named it that till now. My dad hated Baby, though. He hated that I was so attached to a stuffed cow, of all things. He would constantly use Baby to threaten me, holding his ability to take it away over my head, because he knew that was a quick way to make me upset. If it was his choice, I'm sure he would have destroyed it. Not sure why he never did. One day, when he was in a bad mood, my mom was at work, I hid Baby inside my closet. He stormed into my room and demanded for me to give it to him. I lied and said I had no idea where Baby was, but of course he didn't believe me. He tore through my room, ignoring my pleats for him to stop, until he found Baby and took it away. I was forced to clean up the mess he made before my mom got home. When she did get home, I instantly went and hugged her legs tightly and sobbed. I told her that Daddy had taken Baby away and ruined my room. She asked me to take her to my room, so I did, only to find Baby sitting on the bed, staring right back at me. My dad came in. Of course I didn't take the stupid toy, he said. She probably just misplaced it. My mom didn't argue. <laughs> I was outraged. How could she believe him? Looking back, however, she knew something was wrong. I know she did. Even as a kid, I could read it on her face. He didn't give her a choice, though. He let me keep Baby, at least. Though he warned me not to try to tell Mom what he ever did again. Otherwise, he would be very upset with me. <laughs> and I didn't even face the worst of it. I would spend days, weeks, even, here with Grandma Doe, when my dad was especially bad. That's why her and I were so close, and why I don't remember so much of what my dad did. My mom had to endure most of it, though. That is, until she was finally able to get a divorce. He was arrested for a few years. I never learned what for, but I hope it was for the right reasons. When he got out, my mom got a restraining order against him. The last time I saw him was on my 8th birthday. 
he didn't get me anything. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate you caring, but... No, I mean it. If he's still alive, I'll kill him. I, I, I don't know if he's still alive. I mean, it's not like I've made an effort to reach out to him. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It, it's okay. Really, I promise. It was a long time ago. It's just... I'm not sure how much I'm going to remember uh, as time goes on. I mean, I'm sure I would have been forced to confront my childhood eventually. This is just kind of speeding up the process. You, you can always come to me, you know? If it gets to be too much. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, Holly. Really. Of course. Anything I can do. Would a hug be okay? A <laughs> hug would be nice. Today's quote is, in every couple, there is one who is the historian of the relationship. Susan Sontang and Reborn, Journals and Notebooks, 1947-1963 The Heart of Ether is a podcast made by Three-Eyed Frog Presents. It is written and produced by Val West. Our script editor is Emrys Maldarella. Special thanks to Sebastian Valenzuela for help editing today's episode. The voice of Agent May is Caleb Piper. The voice of Agent June is Jackson Rossman. The voice of Lorelei Foster is Lauren Tucker. The voice of Irene Gray is Luca Miller. The voice of Sadie Creed is Paige Alina. The voice of Avery Solis is Jesse Smith. The voice of Phoebe Wood is Lark Pelletier. The voice of Holly Murray is Aubrey Wilson. Music is produced by Luca Miller. To follow the show and find transcripts, you can follow us on Twitter and Tumblr at Heart of Ether. Questions and comments can be emailed to us at heartofether at gmail.com. Want to help support the show? Rate and review us on iTunes and Podchaser, and talk about the show using hashtag Heart of Ether Pod. Also, consider buying us a coffee. It really does help a lot. Thank you for listening. Dear Diary, Today the mean man with the glasses gave me a lobotomy. Would you please take this seriously? This is a scientific recording device. <laughs> I take it you're familiar with the guidelines of your sentence, seeing as you agree to come here of your own volition. That's a pretty generous term. Well, point being, you're here now, and I don't believe your feelings have much of an effect on your situation. You took the deal. You transferred to Nemesine. What's done is done. Hello, please. Where should I commit a crime? Could you direct me to a good place to rob, please? <laughs> Given the lack of successes in this area from my predecessor, Dr. Dent, and the fact that we don't have access to any of the pre-existing research in this because field- Because we're working in a space prison! Because we're working in a space prison. I'm not expecting any major breakthroughs. Amazon, coming to all podcast streaming platforms on July 17th. Remember where you are. <laughs>